What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another week of Form Check Friday. Today we're here with Coach Danny, Danny CBB. For those who don't know, Danny is a coach with Calgary Barbell, has been for a number of years now. Six. Six Five. years, something like that. <laughs> uh, and is also a competitive lifter with a lot of accolades in her own right. What are your What are your best lifts? Raw and equipped. Ooh, both? Yeah, uh, <laughs> old school, numbers. Most recent, I just finished up at the Arnold in the UK. I hit 250 kilo squat, a 122 and a half bench, and 190 deadlift. I was aiming for 200, but wasn't quite there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then raw, ooh, for looking at competition numbers, that was a bad comp, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can just say PRs, right? I'm just gonna go with the PR. You don't have to be too uh, honest. <laughs> Squatted 192 and a half uh, at HQ actually, uh, 102 and a half bench and 197 and a half deadlift. Sick, cool. So Danny's gonna help me out with uh, with the form checks today. So if you're interested again in submitting, go ahead and check the description box below. There should be some info and deets about how you can send your videos in and be featured. For anybody who doesn't know what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pull up some submissions of power lifts that have been sent into us for critique, for the purpose of being critiqued, and we're going to critique them. We're gonna give everybody our best advice on uh, how to improve their lifts. So let's get started. The first contestant of the day here is Cole. Uh, and we're gonna take a look at Cole's deadlift. So Cole's been casually training for around five years now, wants to finally compete next year. Deadlifts are the movement he's the least confident in right now. This video has straps, but generally set up my deadlifts bottom up, so the setup looks the same without them. Uh, feels like on any given day or rep, things can feel wildly different and concerned that his setup is the cause of this. Uh, appreciate any advice that we might have. So right off the hop, obviously, shout out Kings. There's, there's Bray back there. Yo, Bray. Chilling between sets. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you see anything off the hop here, Danny, that you'd, you'd pick out in terms of like setup, consistency, that kind of stuff? Uh, so right off the hop, I'm looking at the feet. So uh, it looks okay. like his feet are a bit more like externally rotated. The shoes look a little bit off. Uh, his balance just kind of looks a little bit off, maybe more in the front of the foot than he needs to be. Yeah. And then we do see that his knees shift forward. So that just kind of tells me that he's not managing his center of mass very effectively. Yeah. Uh, so I think what I would probably get him to do would just be ditch the shoes for a bit and learn to really like feel the floor right. and find that center of mass. Um, yeah. It's okay if the knees are coming forward a little bit, but in these reps here, we can see that it like changes where the bar is at the start. Yeah. So there's like a little bit of displacement happening right at the beginning of the lift, which is causing that lockout to be really grindy at the end. Right, so yeah, you can definitely see it, especially on this rep, as he sits into it, the knees are kind of actually even pushing the bar away from where he sets it up. Yeah. And that's an easy fix. Like we can bring the bar a little bit more forward maybe, but I do mm -hmm. think that just having more balance through the feet is probably gonna solve that in itself. Yeah. And I think it, like if you if you watch Cole's feet, you can definitely see there's part of the rep where he's out here, part of the rep where he's way back here. And it does like his balance seems to shift and change throughout the rep. Well, and even from rep one to rep two, we see mm -hmm. him adjust his feet. So like already there, not each rep is the same anymore. Right, yeah, there's already some inconsistency from rep to rep within a set. Um, yeah, I mean, just to kind of go along with what Danny's saying there, I think number one focus would be the feet. And I'm not sure if it's the shoes or whether it's just maybe being more conscious of it, but in any case, it does look like, yeah, we're a little bit kind of off kilter with the feet. The next thing that I would look at in terms of trying to be more consistent with your setup, especially con for conventional, and especially if you've if you've gone up in weight classes or your body weight's gone up as a result of powerlifting and eating, as it does for most of us, uh, it looks like your belt is really yeah. heckin' tight. Like your belt looks like it's very, very tight. And I think a lot of the times having that really tight belt can kind of make you feel like everything's tight and like you're bracing, but not only is it gonna get in the way and kind of not let you get into positions that maybe you're, you're gonna wanna be in, but also it's gonna, it's gonna give you that illusion of 
being tight when you're not, right? Like you can't expand into it because there's no room for you to expand because it's already constricting and, and restricting the movement and the size of your trunk right off the hop. So the other thing I would do is I would play with loosening your belt a little bit and see if you can find a bit better, more consistent position, then reintroduce the belt or, you know, just, just keep it lighter or sorry, uh, a little bit looser in terms of the belt. Yeah, I personally wear my belt quite loose on deadlifts, one or two looser than squats. Yeah, anytime I find myself between holes or between like spacings in the belt, it's usually one tighter for squats and one looser for deadlifts. And that's just kind of the what what, uh, what feels best for me, but. And I can't really tell what these shoes are. They look like a cross trainer. Or like a hiking shoe almost. Yeah, like but they, they do seem to have like a little bit of give as he gets to the top. Yeah, yeah, and he maybe even like a little bit of a like a slight heel to them. So essentially we wanna be like as flat to the floor as we can be. Um, a lot of the time, if it's a shoe that's meant to be running in or like CrossFit, it's gonna absorb impact, mm -hmm. um, which at the top is gonna to throw you off balance. And in a meet situation, that would be an infraction if you fell forward. Yeah, like you can see here how much his like ankle and foot position changes through the lockout and before he comes back down. Yeah, and like it looks- there's a lot of different movement in the feet even. They're kind of rotating in and out. It almost looks like it's hard to see from this angle, but that left foot almost looks more externally rotated yeah. than the other one. And I don't know if that's maybe like a previous injury or like a gait issue or something, maybe lack of rotation on one side. Yeah. Yeah, that was one thing that kind of stood out to me too, is it almost does look like your your right foot is a little more straight forward and your left one is maybe a little bit in front and pointed out, like your stance might be, might even be a little like asymmetrical, which, you know, at the end of the day is not a make or break thing, but that might be having some impact on your, your ability to feel consistency in the pull for sure. Yeah. And just overall stability, I think in that start position. All right. Well, we hope that helps Cole and hopefully Braden gets some sleep. He's yawning. <laughs> He's yawning. He's looking a little tired back there. Okay. So our next lifter here is Pavel. And Pavel's doing some squats. So setting a squat, he specifically would like to improve technique overall in this lift. Uh, biggest issue he sees is his butt shoots up first when squatting heavy weights. Uh, he feels like his core is moving a little. Um, he says shaking from side to side uh, as if it would not be hard enough. So like, he doesn't feel like his brace is very solid, I think is what he's saying here uh, and wants to get our opinion on it. So. Yeah, I think the number the, the number first thing I would say is to just just learn to embrace the lean a little bit more. Yeah, I think as you're descending, you're trying really hard to, to keep your torso upright. And then when you get to the bottom, you're ending up in a different position, right? You go from like here to here in terms of the torso. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at drawing straight lines with a mouse, but you can you can you get the idea, right? Your hips are coming up because they're stronger there, right? Your hips are coming up into a position where you can produce the force necessary to move the bar. So if you sit your hips back a little more on the way down and kind of mimic that torso angle that you're coming up in, not only are you not gonna have that shift in your torso and in your hips, but you're also just gonna feel stronger and tighter on the descent as well. Uh, so that'd be the first thing I would say. Do you see anything specifically about the brace here or anything like that? Like, do you think there's a, an issue or a, I don't know, anything like that that stands out in terms of why you might be feeling like the brace isn't quite as tight as you'd like? Not necessarily from this angle, but I think one thing that really helped me with squatting was learning to actually engage my core muscles before taking that bracing breath in. Mm -hmm. So um, one way that I was, or I kind of coached this is exhaling some air before you take that breath in. And if you do it audibly, um, when you exhale, you'll feel like those deep core muscles activate and you wanna hold that contraction and then fill the belly with air, the diaphragm and into the chest as well. Um, and that made a big difference for me in my squat bracing, especially as I got into a quip where that was like the make or break of my lift. Yeah, yeah if you can walk it out, <clears throat> that's like the hardest part sometimes in equipment. One thing I find too with like wider squatters like this is like 
If the issue be is that you're constantly shooting your hips back, you may just need to spend more time on building your quad strength. And that might be, you know, a high bar movement with a narrower stance mm. or um, some targeted quad accessory work because the knee extensor probably is the limitation. And that's why your hip extensors are taking over. Yeah. What do you what do you like for quad work outside of like you mentioned high bar stuff specifically? What else? Are you doing or throwing at your lifters if you see this kind of thing crop up? Crop up? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think all my lifters hate that I program so many variations of lunges, Bulgarian split squats. <laughs> Straight leg stuff, yeah. Um, getting into some like Zercher <laughs> lunges right now. Okay. That's been pretty right. fun. Some uh, Zercher split squats. Um, and then just, yeah, utilizing machines as much as we can for this type of stuff, especially if you're like a newbie lifter, it's nice to not have to focus on that external stability so much yeah. and actually be able to, um, give 90, hundred percent without the risk of injury. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last thing, and this just kind of comes from what you were saying, where you, you're saying like, you know, get tight a little earlier kind of thing. I think even watching this lifter, watching Pavel here unrack. I don't think he puts the same emphasis into his brace here before the unrack as he does before he squats. Totally. And I think that if you took the time to set more of your trunk and core brace here, right, you kind of take a bit of a breath and then you just like pick up the bar, we're shrugging with it a little bit and then we're walking out and then watch how hard he braces here, right? Big air, locks in, right? Like this is way tighter of a brace than what you do here. So I think if you were to take more time and get more braced before the unrack, one of the biggest things I notice with my squats is anytime I can make it like feel light on my back, yeah. I know I'm gonna have a good set, good rep, good whatever. But if I can get so locked into the bar that when I pick it up, it feels, you know, 70 kilos lighter than it should, like I know, I know that the squat's gonna go well. So I think that has a lot to do with how hard and how much you're bracing before you pick the bar. Yeah, I'm a big advocate for like, you should be setting the tone on the squat before you unrack because you can't change your position once you're under that weight. And yeah. you know, if you're not you getting- You can, but it's probably not gonna be for the better. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> your position's probably not getting better once you have the weight on your back. Exactly. And I mean, if you're not taking that brace before the unrack to the same extent, like you're probably gonna be in a more flexed upper back position, your rib cage might be more depressed, and all of those things are gonna lead to less rigidity in the torso, which is like the main component of being able to pr produce force effectively. Yeah. Yeah, you need all those components working together in order to do the thing. Our third lifter today here is Isaiah. And Isaiah says he tends to generate a lot of power off the floor, but finds himself having a lot of difficulty with the lift once it gets to lockout. Uh, so he's sure he got the strength for closer to 540, but, oh, sorry, if he's fresh. Uh, this is a 520 attempt and uh, he said it's already definitely gonna get red lights for hitching and ramping. Um, he said my mother called me for ramping when I sent her the PR. That's amazing. Uh, he figures some of it might be lack of muscular development. He's still a novice, um, but a little over a year in the gym and about 10 months since incorporating more like SBD, squat bench deadlift training. He's heard that you usually lockout issues can be linked to problems of positioning. Wanted to make sure to, you know, lock in his form nice and early so he doesn't have chronic lockout issues, he calls them. So, anything stand out off the hop here? You've watched this a few more times than I have since I was reading, so. Well, first off, shout out to your mom. I'm not yeah. sure if my yeah. parents like understand the difference between bodybuilding and powerlifting yet. And yeah. you even been to a few How's meets? that bodybuilding <laughs> thing you do coming? Is that going good? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think with this deadlift in particular, you have some crazy brute strength, man. Uh, you're kind of just like grip it and rip it right now. And I think if we spent a little bit more time uh, setting yourself up uh, in position at the start here, you would likely find that that lockout issue is, well, at least less. But it just seems like we could be pulling into a lot more tension here. The arms could be a lot longer. Mm -hmm in the start position, we'd probably lock out a little bit sooner on the thigh as well. Yeah, I think I agree with uh, with everything Danny's saying there, honestly. Like, just taking an extra second or two to find tension in the bottom, and one thing I notice when we slow this down is you have this kind of sort of natural position here, right? Maybe the, the littlest bit of flexion here, the arms are a little longer, and then as you go to start the pull, you actually kind of pull your shoulders back 
And then as you pull yourself into the actual tension, you're also starting to like try to arch your back, right? Your, your, your upper back goes back, your head comes up. Um, and I think by trying to do a lot of this as bracing, instead of embracing a position that's maybe a little more like this, where again, like Danny said, the arms are a little longer, that's gonna make your lockout a little lower down. As soon as we start to pull the shoulders back, we're just, we're, we're doing a lot of really inefficient work, right? The muscles that pull the shoulder blades back in towards the spine are like tiny. They don't, they're, they're not that strong on, on anybody really. So what's gonna happen is either you're gonna have a shitload of work done up in the back there by a bunch of muscles that aren't gonna do the best job of it, or your shoulder blades are just gonna come pulled forward anyways. So I would rather see you start from a position that's a little more maintained, right? If you start with the shoulders down and a little bit forward, like Danny said, long arms, right? Like you're kind of reaching for that bar. Then you're gonna be able to maintain that position. You're gonna be able to lock that shoulder blade kind of into the lats there. Um, the other thing I think is gonna be, instead of just kind of coming down to this position, grabbing on and then like reefing on it, I'd like to see you set or maintain a little bit more tension as you approach the bar, right? Like you've clearly got a bit of a top down setup, right? So you can see here, like we're setting the brace before we approach the bar. So I would just be a bit more mindful and maybe intentional and, and slower even as you go down to approach the bar so that you can hold more of that brace that you took at the top, hold more of that breath that you took at the top. And then the other thing I would do is I would try to get out of the habit of doing this with your head, right? Where you're trying to like pull the head back and pull into a bunch of flexion and extension, or sorry, a bunch of extension, uh, and kind of keep yourself in a little more flexion. If your upper back is a little rounded over, that's okay, right? That's one way I see lifters get out of some of these habits is they're able to stay a little more neutral here because they allow the rounding in the upper back. Whereas when we try to get extension, we're probably gonna get a little bit of extension kind of in the mid back, and then we're gonna lose a bunch in the low back because we just kind of can't maintain them you know, a schwacka global extension against a max deadlift. Yeah, and it seems like we're putting a lot of effort into like pushing the chest up, 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 but we don't have a lot of effort into like <clears throat> the opposing force, which would be pushing down into the floor. Mm -hmm. So just setting, spending a little bit more time setting the feet and pushing into the floor as well to create that tension in your position. And that does come from, like Bryce said, slowing down the movement a little bit and being able to feel that and find that. Yeah, yeah, definitely chasing down that feeling of like using more of your legs, using more of your quads. And we can even see here, there's a very distinct moment right there where the knees pop back, right? Cause they're like, oh, I don't know, knee extension isn't <laughs> gonna do it. We gotta like, we gotta displace this load and strain to somewhere else that can, can do a little bit more work. So then all of that work gets put back here on the hips and low back and hamstrings and stuff, right? And then we get to here and it's like, okay, the hips are done. You know, the hips mostly extended there we're just having to pull through extension with the back, more or less. And that's where people get stuck, that's where people get hung up. So yeah, if you can work, again, that feeling of like pressing and pushing the floor more is really gonna help with, uh, with keeping those quads on, with keeping in the quads, with keeping a little more of that like leg drive. So a lot of what I'm saying here goes back to what Danny was, was saying about trying to find more of that push off the floor, as opposed to thinking about it as just a pull. Cool. Stoked to see what you pull, though. Yeah, no Make doubt. Make sure you update us. You didn't say your age in here, but I have a feeling you're a pretty young lifter and uh, you're strong, man. So keep it up. And shout outs to your mom for being a real one. <laughs> Next up is Tomas. And Tomas is doing Tomas, 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 Tomas is doing some squats as well. Uh, he has a, says, a, says he has a problem with his upper back coming out of the hole and often gets stopped in the middle of the squat. Uh, someone told him to widen his stance, but when he tried it three times, he always has the same problems and some pain in his hip and lower back. So going wider doesn't seem to be the issue here, but he says he's, he's running into a sticking point uh, and his upper back is caving out of the bottom. First off, I like that you tried it a couple of times because it, you know, you never feel it out in one session. I think mm -hmm. it's good to try something for at least a couple of sessions or maybe even a few weeks. Yeah. First thing I just kind of notice is like, he looks quite shrugged um, on the unrack. Mm -hmm. And I think that right away is just gonna kind of set the tone for having upper back issues in right. the squat. 
Yeah, like obviously the upper back, I think for sure. If we're feeling like the upper back is the place that we're losing it, we probably need to do some work there. You can see it pretty, pretty pronounced on this second or third rep where the bar actually kind of rolls up your back a little bit. One of the things I would look at is maybe a lower bar position. Uh, I think if you can comfortably get that bar a little lower on your back, like right now, if this is your shoulder, you've got the bar here. So when you get to the bottom, it's rolling up your back like that. If you can get that bar this little bit lower, ideally it's just gonna, it's just gonna push here instead of being more on the corner where if it pushes this way, it's gonna roll up easier. Maybe that makes some sense. And lastly, I think you're also trying to be too upright. I think by this rep, the second rep, you do a better job with your torso angle. The first rep looks like we're trying to stay really upright. And then I think we're running into issues where we're kind of running out of space in the hips. We're maybe not quite getting, uh, we got depth, but I think our torso angle is changing a little bit throughout. So it's really counterintuitive to like embrace the lean when you're a lifter who feels like they get pulled forward too much. Cause you're like, well, I get pulled forward and it feels bad. You're telling me to squat more forward, <laughs> which doesn't necessarily make yeah. a whole lot of sense to people, but. But if the bar is a little bit lower, you're gonna be getting less pulled forward or less bullied by the barbell. Yeah, yeah, right. and ideally more comfortable in that lean. <laughs> it does look like maybe there might be a limitation with the shoulder mobility for a lower bar position. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing, it's like his elbows are really cranked back. They look like they're creating maybe more of like a passive sense of tightness. Like mm -hmm. he's just really jammed in there and I yeah. don't think he's like getting full use of like the lats and, and kind of pulling the lats down to um, just be a little tighter through the upper back. So yeah, I think definitely. paying some attention to that, um, maybe widening your grip like one finger width even so you can actually feel your lats a little bit more. Um, sometimes if we're just trying to be as narrow as possible to get tight, uh, we're not actually tight, we're just creating this illusion of tightness and it probably just hurts more than anything. <laughs> the other thing I'm seeing here is it looks like as he descends, he's really pushing his elbows like forwards yeah. to try to create that tension. And like Danny was saying, I think the, the play is to try to like almost pull the bar down into your back. I know a lot of lifters who have kind of fallen into that trap of like, <laughs> oh, well I just need to like wedge my elbows forward and you know, that pins your shoulder blades into place. But if we watch this second rep, he pushes his elbows forward more, and then we just kind of end up like shoulder blades protracted a little bit, and then the bar rolls, and we're just like losing a lot of tightness in that upper back. So I also think that the like the, the suggestion of maybe going a little wider could definitely help, not only with maybe getting that bar a little bit lower, but with actually feeling a little more of the upper back yeah. lock in as you go through it. That's a pretty long femur, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, he's got a lot of, a lot of, uh, distance to travel with that squad. Great ankle mobility though. I was, yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say. And our last one here is Tesh Reef. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. So I recently hit a sumo deadlift PR of 160 at 83. He's wondering about his form. After the setup, his hips rise, and then he uses his quads and spinal erectors to complete the lift. It's my understanding this reduces the efficiency of the lift, and I'd like to solve it. So to do, uh, to fix it, he wants to know if he should, number one, start with higher hips, or number two, widen his stance, uh, lower his hips, and have decreased stability. I kind of like his initial start position. He yeah. just kind of looks a little bit impatient, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know that I would tell you to start your hips higher or lower. No. I think I would have you start your hips right where they are, but just don't let them come out of position, right? Like, be more patient in how you're starting the lift because we're actually not using enough quads is one of the issues. Yeah. Like we're not getting enough quads, we're not strong enough in the quads, whatever you want to call it. So we're seeing this knee extension happen. And you know, we're then, like I said earlier, kind of shifting all the weight back onto the hips and hamstrings. We're ending up in a pretty stiff-legged position. So what I would have you do is, you know, work on trying to maintain this position more, right? Keep those knees wedged forwards keep that toe pressure, keep the feeling of pressing down and pushing the floor away and be patient, right? Like a good sumo deadlift often is gonna feel toughest off the floor and you're gonna have to just like dig in, keep pushing and don't let it bully you out of position. Yeah, I think 
like same thoughts honestly i think a lot of people kind of fear that like one or two seconds of like waiting for it to leave the floor but if you can really overcome that you'll really find that once you you wait and it pops up even an inch or two you can get it off the floor and pass the knee quite easily yeah i always like to look back at like uh, Steffi Cohen's deadlifts because she's <laughs> yeah. like the master of patience. Yeah. I swear there have been some that are like, it feels like, like eight a full, to ten seconds. Yeah. <laughs> full, full three seconds of just being pulled in and like, Her whole like body is shaking. this bar going to go anywhere? And then it just like creeps up the first inch, then the second inch, and then it's just like, okay, she's got it. So yeah, that's a, that's a really good example of, of sort of the extreme end. <laughs> it's extreme. Of, of that patience. <laughs> But yeah, just like keeping the knees wedged forward, keeping it in the quads, keeping toe pressure. Uh, your start position looks great here, honestly. Um, I think it's a good balance of like being in a good spot over the bar. You know, shoulder blades are, I really can't draw a straight line with the mouse, but you'll forgive me, I hope. Um, you know, like I think we're in a really solid position here. We just have to keep those lats locked in, right? Keep that bar pulled nice and close. Because what ends up happening is, yeah, when the hips come up, the shoulders roll up, the bar starts getting away from you. We're just not staying locked into the position we're starting in well enough. And then I guess, like, how do we cue him to, you know, stay in his quads a little bit more? Um, I typically like just to leg press the earth cue because I feel like a lot of people understand that because we've all probably leg pressed the earth more in the yeah. <laughs> beginning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure if you have any other cues that you would use for that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think as soon as we get that concept of patience, like it might just take some time and experimentation. Um, you know, some some light pause deadlifts as part of your warm up might help. Just trying to get that bar floating, like yeah, an true. inch off the ground or something, um, and really just trying to keep that feeling in your quads, right? If you're if you're feeling like your quads are the limiting factor, you know, s stay there and keep pushing, uh, and I think that'll help you stay in that you know, more sort of semi-upright position off the floor a lot better. Well, thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, Danny's gonna be back next Friday. And if you wanna follow Danny or find her on social media, where can uh, where can people find you? Uh, Danny CBB, really easy. <laughs> the one and only. And yeah, send your videos in if you want, it's down below. Uh, let us know if you have any thoughts to add to any of our critiques and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.